up the volume nice and loud. Because we are controlling transmission. You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl. With your host, Dawn Marie. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. I'm not sure if you're a fan of Audible yet or not, but for those of you who love to read books as much as I do, I probably read about 65 to 80 books a year, and I don't really have the time to read. So if you're like me, then this is for you. You can now turn your car into a university, work out and learn, or just put around the house while getting inspired, learn new ways to make your business thrive, or a new skill that can help your personal life flourish. I have a special offer for you. If you go to www.littledrummergirl.com, that's L-I-L drummergirl.com forward slash resources, in the middle of the page, there's a link for a free 30-day trial of plus two credits to two free book downloads and that's at any price point so even if you cancel the membership after 30 days you get to keep the two books forever so that you don't have to wait anymore so get started today for free it'll change your life for the better forever go check it out welcome to another episode of the little drummer girl i'm your host Marie mutel And tonight, we have a really special guest, Nelson Rivera. I met Nelson when he was performing at a place called Skipper's, which is in Tampa, Florida. They were at a Caribbean festival, and I immediately fell in love with his style of drumming and percussion. His wife, Bickley Rivera. Check out episode number 28, Bickley Rivera, Queen of the Steel Pan Drum. His origin in music stems from his Puerto Rican descent, growing up listening to Aguinaldo music and watching his dad perform as a quattro guitarist in performing groups. Nelson performed in 10 bands, some very well known in Wisconsin, before creating the last two groups, Cuba Libre and Bickley Island Chill, which he performs with his wife as a core group. It's in his latest group, Bickley Island Chill, that he has perfected his percussion style that he coined street free form. His Caribbean influences helped shape the production of Caribbean Madness, which was the only Caribbean riverboat cruise series on the Connecticut River, which sold out for five seasons. His performance have taken to Wisconsin, Michigan, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York, Ohio, Maryland, Florida, and the Bahamas, which averages over 120 shows a year. If there's one phrase to describe Nelson, most would say, Yaman. Nelson, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm so ecstatic that you're here tonight because I've been wanting to interview you for quite some time now. So thank you. I'm surprised. (laughs) (laughs) I'm usually not the one being interviewed. It's Bickley. Well, you know, I did have Bickley on the show, which I think is episode, uh, uh, gosh, I don't want to say the number because I don't know off the top of my head here, but I will list it in the show notes. But, um, and I just, but I, I fell in love when I first saw you play and I just, your style was so cool and so unique. And I see you've coined it street form, street free form. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I call it, you know, freestyle, street free form, freestyle percussion. Only because uh, it's just things that I've picked up along the years listening to percussionists, drummers, and me being in so many various different types of bands. I just picked up my own style, which fits in perfect with the uh, Bickley Island show. That's really about I, it. I I've never that. been, I've never been really trained or went to school on any type of percussion work. But it's just, it all comes with from within my heart and feeling. That's all it is. And that's amazing because I mean, the two of you together. It's just, it's like watching, like, a, a, it's just like musical notes floating in front of me. I, because it's amazing how you work off of each other. And it's just, it's mind-boggling, really. Um, but I see that you've been in 10 bands over the years. Uh, how old were you yeah. when you started? Because weren't you into bass first or something like that? Yes, uh, I'm originally a bass player. And I started off in Milwaukee, Wisconsin uh, at uh, uh, grade six. I met this wow. guy that was a musician and then he turned me on to it and I just, I just liked the idea of it. And then he said, why don't you play this bass? I'll play the guitar. And then from there we took off and I started learning how to do basic, uh, you know, Beatles and basic stuff like that. Then worked my way up into rock, rock and roll. Then started joining other bands in Milwaukee, more progressive, more, uh, bands that were playing out, making money. Cause that's really what I wanted to do back then. And some of them became pretty popular there. And uh, 
But yeah, I started with bass playing and from there worked on to what I am now, a percussionist. So, but when you learned how to play bass, you were doing it all by ear or were you taking lessons? Yes. Uh, uh, well, again, I, back in high school, I did play the upright bass. And then oh, I did okay. take wow. a couple of, of, of music lessons uh, on the side music school, you know, for bass playing. But I never really did get into the need or the feel to want to learn to read the music. So I mm-hmm. never did read the music. I only felt the music all, you know, from a child that I just felt music could feel the singing and feel where things went. So that's why just about everything I do as far as music wise, it's just free form, freestyle things that I feel. So when I listen to a song back then, I would just listen to it. Okay. I see what the bass, I can envision what the bass player is doing. So I just did it. Mm. And I love the sticks that you play with. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about them? My sticks? Yeah, because oh. they're so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't play uh, a, a, a normal set of drumsticks. As, uh, most people play drumsticks or they use their hands. Uh, I can't use my hands because they're too delicate. <laughs> I never, you know, I uh, have a little bit of arthritis there. So I, what I did is uh, I went and got a pair of uh, golf sticks, and I picked the ones that were car- a carbon fiber, very lightweight. So I cut them at wow. the slenderest ends, cut them to about six, seven inches, wherever it feels balanced in my hand. And then I get surgical tubing and put it around the tips of the oh, wow. the sticks. And that's uh, the reason I do that is because I like that little bounce I get off the surgical mm-hmm. tubing. And the surgical tubing also kind of mutes the, the drum stick. You know, instead of having a, a, a wooden stick hitting the skin, right. I have that surgical fiber hitting it, or the, the tubing, which is a, a nice smoother sound that I like. That's yeah, about I think it. it's a little bit more of a deeper bassy yeah. kind of a yeah. sound, right? That is right. so cool. I mean, the first time I saw you play, I'm like, what is he playing with? <laughs> like, I'm yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people always question me about, what, what is that? What, is, you know, why are you doing that? What, what is this? says, well, I make them, you know, I make it for my wife and I make it for myself. She also uses the same style sticks on her steel pan. Oh, wow. You know, so we buy the the carbon fiber uh, golf uh, sticks, uh, clubs that nobody uses anymore, cut them down, put that down. Because they're lightweight. Wow. Yeah. I may have to ask you to make me a pair of mine. Because um, when I was playing Mike Cajon, I, I got the other sticks, but I wanted to play more like some timbales and things like that. And I thought I want something beside a regular stick that I could play with. And, and I think that Yeah, maybe you can go my, my style. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I really like it a lot. I, I really do. Yeah. And uh, So how did you... um? How did you end up playing with Bickley? I mean, were you guys, I know she's your wife, so was it love at first sight, or was it the music that brought you together? Uh, b- b- uh, I guess a uh, relationship started before the music. Uh, oh, okay. I met her back again in Connecticut. I had moved from Milwaukee to Connecticut in uh, 1986. And through friends of a friends, I met her at a raft race. They were building a raft for a race in the Connecticut River, and then we just hit it off there. Asked her off for a date, and she said, no way. I said, okay, <laughs> maybe later. And then later on, I asked her for a pizza, and she says, okay, let's go for a pizza. And then from there on, our relationship grew as friends. And uh, it wasn't until many, many weeks after our, our, us dating that we find out that we were both musicians. I didn't know that she was classic. Yeah, I didn't know she was classically trained on piano. She played keyboards, and uh, she didn't know that I was a bass player because we just never talked about it until one day somebody that knew knew us said, "Well, she's a musician. She's a musician." I said, "What?" (laughs) (laughs) So we were both surprised, and uh, we said, "Hey, let's let's do some jamming." (laughs) And from jamming, now it's been. 25 years of playing music. Wow. That's, yeah. I love that story. That's awesome. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I never caught the story the, behind the, how you guys met. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome. So what would you say maybe was one of your, I don't know, biggest challenges that you might have faced 
you know, whether it was trying to get into the music business or um, being in the music business or something happening, and how did you handle it? <sighs> well, I'd say the biggest challenge is when I decided uh, many years ago to quit. But to it quit was uh, the, to quit completely playing. Uh, at the time, it was bass. I was a bassist. So back in 2001, we moved from Connecticut well, we had performed there with our uh, a, a different band. It was still Bickley's band, but under a different name, and we did bilingual-style music. We mixed nice. it up with Spanish, rock, and uh, jazz, fused it together, and we were able to perform many shows there like that. Wow. So we did that for about 10 years. So then we moved here 2001, and we thought we can carry the same idea of music here to Florida. But ah, big surprise, mm. what we played over there didn't work over here. Mm. So uh I thought about it for a while after, you know, doing a couple of shows. It, I just didn't feel it anymore. So just about 2002, I said, that's it, Big Lee. I'm going to stop uh, playing bass for a while. I just don't feel it. You know, so, and then she, wow. uh, yeah, and she at the time then said, well, I'm going to stop playing keyboards. And uh, I think I'm going to uh, pick up a plain steel pan, and I'm going to start with uh, learning at uh, St. Petersburg uh, College. So yeah. she went off in to do that, and I just took a vacation for five years. I didn't touch wow. the bass. Right. And I just uh, I just didn't feel it anymore. You know, I don't know. The passion was gone. So uh, me sitting on my, you know, rear end, just watching her <laughs> do her thing. Then uh, I noticed she started to get very, uh, very well. She started per, uh, playing the steel pan pretty good, and, and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna uh, instead of uh, being in a band with her, I'm gonna be her agent." <laughs> so I started booking her. <laughs> nice. So that's what I started doing. So I started to booking her in certain clubs and things, and she started, you know, perfecting her art and uh, you know the instrument. And then it was more and more demand for her. And I said, well, I'm following her to the gigs because I have to carry all this equipment for her. And so I was the roadie at the time, setting up the PA, doing this and that and that. And I then by chance, <laughs> yeah. So we had some extra percussion equipment. And one day I just said, yeah, I'm going to play the bongos on a show with her just for the heck of it. So I started playing the bongos with her and then another show, then another show, then another show. And I started expanding my percussion equipment to finally I said, okay, I'm going to be a percussionist now. I'm going to join your band. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love <laughs> So that. I more or less snuck into her band, but uh, it turned out well because she needed a percussionist and a vocalist. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just... And I love the fact that you have a home recording studio and you guys record together. And, um, I, I, you know, I just follow you guys now and I'm just seeing like everything you guys are doing. And it's just, you always have a gig and I love it because you play all over the place. So I see yeah, you yeah. back in Wisconsin, right? Coming up soon. A uh, matter of fact, next week or, uh, this Saturday coming, we're uh, leaving, go to Tennessee from Tennessee, Chicago, Chicago to Milwaukee where we have, uh, one show for sure, possibly two, and then at the same time visit family. Then Very work our way sweet. back. Yeah. That's so, nice. Uh, That's a really all my family's there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So uh, we had a pretty nice, important show up there because uh, I haven't performed there myself in about 20-some years, and there's a lot of people looking wow. forward to seeing uh, Bickley Ivan Chill because uh, they knew me as a bass player. Now they're going to see me as a percussionist. <sighs> and back then... 80s, of course, we did rock and roll, heavy metal, da 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 da, you know. Uh-huh. So all that yeah. stuff. So it's uh, Nelson, in, you know, a different transition. <laughs> oh, and they're going to see, yeah, that's going to be awesome. If you yeah. can, if you can, you know, shoot me some video, if you have somebody shoot some video and send it my way, I'll make sure I put that up. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're definitely going to get video for that. Yeah, and uh, talking about before you were saying uh, about us performing. We do over 120 shows a year with uh, the Big Island amazing. Show Band. Yeah, we're wow. pretty busy, and uh, we get a lot of repeat customers, I guess, <laughs> clubs that uh, do like the music. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I it's a up, been... upbeat, you know, really upbeat exactly. reggae, soca calypso blended together, and 
we love writing our music, so we're out, we're about four albums out already. I love that, and I'm going to make sure uh, you guys. Ha- you're on uh, CD Baby, is it that you sell? Yeah, you we're on that? CD Baby and whatever anywhere you can get records. We're on there. We're on Pandora. Uh, you can go oh, on Pandora right. and, and look for us there. You know. Uh, I'm going to put the links to those as well on the show notes. Yeah. So tell me something. I know our time is getting uh, away from me here. I wanted to see: Are you ready for the eleven stroke roll rapid fire interview? I'm ready for anything, baby. <laughs> right, my kind of guy. Your favorite. I like. Thing? I say, yeah, man. Send it my way, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Your favorite food. Uh, sushi. Your favorite vacation spot. Ooh, Bahamas. Your favorite article of clothing. Uh, my bathing suit. <laughs> you are my kind of guy. Favorite person <laughs> to hang out with? My wife. Your favorite album? Uh, that's a tough one, but uh, a Return to Forever from Al Di Niola. I don't know that. Yeah, that's smooth. <laughs> uh, it's uh, fusion jazz mm. from the I 90s. A tremendous cool. guitar player. Yeah. We gotta check he used that to play out. with Chick Corea, Stanley Clark. Oh, other really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Car or motorcycle? I do them both, but I, I'd stick with car because it's safer. <laughs> okay, I hear you. Name one item you can't live without. Uh, roast pork. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're making me hungry. <laughs> if you could be reincarnated as anyone, famous or not, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's a tough one. I never thought about reincarnation. Ooh, you got me there. Uh, I really don't have anyone that I would want to come back as other than myself again. And I just like be that. A, you know, a, a better person uh, towards people and... And have a more positive direction towards life. That's really about it. I like that. Your favorite music to listen to when you're not working? Oh, uh, uh, smooth jazz. Hi. Your favorite time, excuse me, your favorite pastime? Oh, fishing. Oh, <laughs> cool. Freshwater and... fishing, largemouth bass. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, it sounds cool. I've never done anything like out in the open water, so that must be pretty neat. Um, your biggest pet peeve? Uh, people not wiping uh, the the shopping carts when shopping with the, the sanitizing wipes. <laughs> <laughs> I never touch one without uh, wiping it. When I see people grabbing them and just going into the shop, you know, to do their shopping without even cleaning them, I just like, that's disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for playing that. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) So tell me, um, how can our friends listening stay in touch with you guys and, um, you know, follow you and, and see if you're playing in their area that they can go catch a show. Well, that'd be nice. I'll, I'll try and give as much information as I can because I love people to follow us and try and enjoy our music because it is exciting and it is different from your regular reggae, soca, calypso bands in, in Florida right now. We are, we're really different. But you could just follow us at BickleyRivera.com is our website. And uh, there you can find our schedule, you know, videos. It'll lead you to YouTube. We have many videos on YouTube. Uh, our, our schedule, all that you can find on BickleyRivera.com. Beautiful. And you're also on Instagram too, right? Yes, we're on Instagram, Spotify, you know. Very cool. So I will make Facebook, sure Facebook. Obviously, Facebook. Facebook well. You can look under uh, Bickley uh, uh, Rivera, you know, Beautiful. Twitter. 
But we're on the, all media. Yeah, and everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, in yeah, our kind of, in this kind of business, you have to do everything that you can because no one is going to do it for you. You know, a lot of people it's think, uh, you know, yeah, it's true. A lot of people think, uh, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then, you know, someone's going to find me or something's going to, no, nothing's going to happen unless you make it happen. You I'm know? so glad you say that because <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, I can't say it enough because people like, yeah. you know, you could sit on your bus as much as you want, but it's yeah, really you could, you know, and anywhere. you can be the best band, <laughs> and you can have the best musicians, but if you don't go out there and hunt for jobs or find different, you know, venues, different, you know, medias, different things, it's not going to happen. You know, you you, you got to involve the writing with the advertising and the promotion. You know, and you, but you got to do it until someone does exactly. it for you. And, you know, I'm so still yeah, waiting. That's nice. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm still waiting, you know. I don't know what's going what? on here. I hear you. Because I'm like, well, where's my team of people? <laughs> yeah, you know. I says, wait, I you guys missed me. Like you guys, <laughs> how did that happen? You missed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's all right. You know, we're we're happy what we do right now, yeah, and uh, you know, uh, as long as we make the people happy when we perform, you know, we're happy. That's you true. Know. That is very true. Yeah. What would you say if you know somebody is just starting out? I mean, what you just said was really important. But if you have somebody who's just starting out, what words of wisdom would you give them about the business? You know, straight out, straight out and forward, it's a very, very, very tough business to get into because there's so many different things that you have to do other than just playing the music and there is so much competition out there. It's like, okay, what am I going to do that's going to make me different from the others? But you know how many other different people there are? Thousands and thousands. <laughs> you know, it's like a, you know, it's like a grain of a, a sand in, in a beach. It's like everybody's trying to do the same thing you are, and they all have the same idea. It's just like, what can I do to really, you know, break apart from the rest and stick with it? That's the other thing. There's so many things that happen that'll bring you down, you know, but you got to have that motivation and that, that the will to keep going because uh, if you don't, that's when it stops. You know, that's huge. It, so as soon as you give up, that, that's really it. But uh, if you love it and you like it, do it. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> I couldn't have said it better. That's, that's perfect because it's so true. I mean, really. And, and when you get this bond and they get like knocked down, uh, you got to just say, okay, you know what? Today was, you know, it was an off day. Tomorrow's another yeah, day. Right. And, yeah. and move on. Um, but I yeah. think a lot of people, they take it too personally. And when they get rejected, I mean, no one wants rejection. Rejection yeah, is a really tough thing to rejection. deal with. Right. But this business is all about rejection. It's like a yeah. salesman job. You know, it's got to knock from door to door. And yeah. uh, when I first got into real estate, one of my managers had said to me, you know, Dormery, cold calling is like, you know, the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. And I and I always mm. believed in that after that. And I said, oh, that makes a lot of sense because you know nothing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's it. kind of that also kind of applies with the uh, uh, finding shows because uh, there are a lot of agents here in, in Tampa, Florida, and throughout. Uh, but uh, and once they get you as a client, it's not like they're constantly hunting for you. You know, to me, an agent, I think, waits for someone to call him. Hey, I'm looking for a band. Okay, let me see. I have Jack and Jill available. But nobody really works in your behalf, you know, uh, as much as yourself. That's the way it should be. And it should be that way. But that's It should be, but, yeah, it's, you know, that's, that's, uh, again, that's, uh, that's why, you know, unless you really, uh, I don't know what people say is, you know, make it. That's when you have management, you have promoters, you have everybody taking care of all those little things that we take care of now. You, I, you know, the local musicians, we have to handle okay. everything. That's why we're indie artists, you know. Right, I mean, yeah. We, and know, I and we, I feel like it's the right, the way to go in this world today because you are going to protect your best interest, which is you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, and you, right. Unless it's a family member or somebody, a best friend that you knew that you can trust, but, you know, they got right. you back. 
I, right. I feel like when you start paying people to do things for you, like they're just lacking and they're, they're really not doing what you're paying them to do. Right. It's so, right. uh, you know, even when I used to, I remember when I used to model and, you know, you had to get new headshots and, and people would say, you know, be careful who you go to with photographers and things like that because they were all looking yeah. to make money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, it's tough. It's business. We all want to make money. <laughs> so everybody right. tries, you know, it's just, you know, and how you make that money. And, you know, exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with do. making money. It's just people yeah. who scam people to make it. It's just not right. It's not yeah, that's true. You know, and um, we're trying, and you know, to the best we can to, you know, handling our business because it's not just a band for us. It, it's 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 a business. You know, we run it really straight. Right. And, and that, I mean, you're saying you're doing 120 shows a year. I mean, that, what does that come out to, like a month? That's like 40. No. That that's uh, that's you know a good 10, 15, 20 yeah, shows. You know, it all the. Uh, our busiest month is always a March. On a March, really? we could be oh, doing is that yeah. Of spring break. Yeah, I don't I don't know why, but for many years it's been that way. That that's our busiest month. You know, it could be twenty shows every wow. other day. Usually, it's every wow. other day in March. Yeah, and wow. since we are a full time band, you know, we're available morning, noon. Hopefully not night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the late shows. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. With my band, yeah. we were doing uh, Treasure Island, and we were doing like a Saturday afternoon from like, what was it, like 1 to 6, and I'm like, this is the best. Yeah, that's what I like. You end at 6, 12 to 5, or yeah. no later than 10. That's it, my curfew. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's why you look so youthful. I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to sleep early, wake up early. Yeah, so. going to sleep early, wake up. Like this well. morning, I woke up at uh, quarter after five and go hit my Starbucks. You know, nice. So, uh, kick back, relax, so, and come home. I know you have a workout routine, things like that. Can you share some of that with us? Uh, you mean, clean uh, uh clean and the whole foods and all that stuff. That guys oh have. yeah. Well, it, it all starts, big, big, you know, from Bickley, my wife, you know, uh, she's a, a health freak. I call her. So we <laughs> do watch what we eat, what we drink. Uh, we don't eat red meat very rarely re- eat red meat, a lot of salads, a lot of fish. We go to, uh, uh, the workout. What's the name of that place? You fit. We go to you oh, fit yeah. three, four times a week. Uh, she wow. goes even more than that. Uh, we bike, we hike, you know, uh, cool. canoeing whenever we can because we have a lake in the back. And oh, uh, nice. so, yeah, and then we take our vitamins just like Hulk Hogan used to, you know. <laughs> 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 have you seen him down here since? No, but, uh, yes, I did see him several times. Once at the airport and, and, uh, uh, two other times when we played for this, uh, uh, Stingray Chevrolet. Oh, yeah. For, for whatever reason, he always used to donate a Corvette. So we would be performing wow. there and he would be there and, and that's how we, we met him. Oh, and, cool. uh, but I hear he's coming, I think he's supposed to be going back to WWE for wrestling again. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's well, he's the word gonna I be heard. up there in age. <laughs> oh yeah, and I, I don't know what, how he's gonna get on stage, but you know, he better have. Maybe a... he's announcing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be the better thing for him to do is announce. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think he should come back to the ring. That's. Uh, I don't know, but hey, if he does, more power to. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Great. Right? <laughs> so that's how we met him, and you know, and that's as far as it, that goes, but. Uh, yeah, it was at Stingray Chevrolet, and then, and that was really about it. I didn't have with him. Cool. Well, Nelson, thank you so much for for being here this evening. I really appreciate it. It really means the world to me. Well, I thank you for the interview. It's my first interview with anybody because usually I don't talk to anybody unless they talk to me. And I, oh, really? I'm, I'm a, well, I yeah, I'm really usually a real. It. I'm usually a, a quiet guy, and you know, unless you know, I know the person. So luckily, I know you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yaman. <laughs> Yaman. That's what I say. I can't wait to say it in Milwaukee in 19 below zero. <laughs> oh, they're going to be like. Yeah, I called like today to check out the place where we're performing. They said, yeah, it's 19 degrees right now, but when you get here, probably below zero. So thanks a lot, man. 
Oh my god. Mm. So it's the first time in twenty years that you're gonna be playing, but that's very, very cool. I mean that's good. Yeah, be yeah, I'm I'm really excited. My wife is too and uh we're we're gonna reggae rise up. Milwaukee All Wisconsin. Right. <laughs> Milwaukee style. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that where Laverne and Shirley used? TV show? Yeah. It's yeah, Milwaukee, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, they worked at the Miller, I think. The Miller yeah, Brewing Company. Yeah, the there. <laughs> yeah. I used to, we used to go there when we were kids just to go get free beers every week. And you say, okay, okay, let's go do a tour. They do it because you do the tour. On the, on the tour, then you just drink, drink, drink. And uh, free, fun, free, fun, free. fun. <laughs> yeah. But at that time, uh, 18, at age 18, you can go drink over there. Yeah, I remember that. I was I now, was I, I got legal once I think it was for like a week and then they yeah. changed it to nineteen and then I was oh. I was good for about another week and then they changed it to twenty one. Yeah. Twenty one. Like what's yeah. going? What on? is it now? What is it now? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. I remember eighteen oh. hitting every bar, every jazz <laughs> club, music scene because at that time we were into the music scene and we would go from bar to bar listening to all types of music. Because Milwaukee okay. at that time to me was wow, it was happening, and a lot of bands there. I've never been over that way. It's it's funny. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I don't uh, know anybody from there. You're the first person I know from. Yeah, I grew up around everybody played guitar, or if not guitar, wow. uh, drums, and bass players were always in demand. So there, I fell in. Perfect. Wow, I can't believe you played an upright bass. Though. That I didn't. Yeah, I upright didn't bass at play. school was a lot of fun. That was while I was in. Uh, Choir also I was in choir. Oh wow! So. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Very and cool. then uh, in, when I was in uh, Catholic school, I was in their choir too. So yeah, I did that and for I, about a week or two. <laughs> well, I did that for your seven <laughs> years. Four years, seven years. Wow. Yeah, Long time. Catholic, Catholic grown, yeah. homegrown, Milwaukee, Long Wisconsin, with the cool. nuns in the black and the and the white and. <laughs> but, do you remember when they kicked the habit? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I know when they kicked us, man. They were brutal to us. Oh, they were brutal. No, I know. I had I had some... I remember getting slapped in the first grade. Oh, yeah. For us, I, I remember... Uh, yeah. yeah. Not fun. I got... Uh, what they used to do to us, take out the ruler and slap you in the hand. And Bam! I had, I had the, Bam! Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. And this one woman that in the second grade, she had an iron metal ruler and she used to do that to the boys in the in the class and I remember feeling yeah. like oh my god that's horrible <laughs> yeah <laughs> that I remember that it's like well how can you get away with this and but ooh, and then yeah. they had it in math class too what's two times two four <laughs> you're right and it still hits you in the hand <laughs> I, know. And, uh, I, think I don't know I think they're just masochists or something that they got away with it <laughs> yeah. but they did a lot of damage I mean I hear stories from, from other friends of mine that went through similar things and it's horrible and I'm glad they don't do yeah. that anymore but it's just well there's a lot of things they don't do anymore you know that uh, it's true too <laughs> you know. like that's another story but Nelson uh, our time is, is has arisen um, I will make sure that I put everything all the links to everything in the show notes so that anyone listening yeah. tonight can actually uh, you know, check it out. Maybe pick up a couple of CDs because I know, like, I listen to your music through um, Pandora, yeah. and it's just so cool that you guys are up there. Yeah, so, yeah. A lot of people they call us. Uh, they can't believe we're on Pandora. So, yeah. Well, we're on there. Can't believe it. You guys have been like rocking it. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, we're, we're like I said, we're on everything. We were on the the Weather Channel for many years. They played our music. No. And, uh, way. That's yeah, cool. we were on the Weather Channel for, I don't know, three years and getting those royalty checks. Keep them coming. Wow. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. How did, how did you get a deal like that? Like, did you, did you do it? Did your agent do it? Uh, no, like I told you before, agents don't do anything for you. It's we we do it. Anything that happens to us is because we do it. Uh, that that one, I give credit to Bickley. Bickley's the one that wow. searched it down. And uh, when she came out, you remember the smooth jazz music, right? Oh yeah, that we, we used to do. Yeah, well, it was back then when we did the smooth jazz music. Is I don't know how she did it, but linked up with them, and then uh, now you know we're on there. That's and then that's sometimes uh, our, uh, we're on Music Choice also. You know. Oh, I like that so, Music Choice. Yeah, yeah so hey, there we are. They're playing our music. That's awesome. So, but you know, it's all that it's from us, and uh, see what happens. I don't know. 
Right now, like I say, everything's yeah. happy. You know, we're happy what we're doing. It could always be better. And we're always striving to get better. But uh, when you see things happen around great. you, you say, how did that happen and not us? I don't get it, you know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that one. Yeah. But yeah. I just think it's really great. And I can't wait to come to another show. And um, sorry, I missed the uh, Whiskey whiskey, whiskey Joe's, was it? Um, but, yeah. Well, for that uh, commercial, the commercial we shot yeah. over there? Yeah. That's all right. Well, you got to go with Jesse. Jesse's your boyfriend, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you got to go with him. Is a place called Crump's Landing in Homosassa. It's a brand new place that opened up. We just got hired there to next year, December 2019. We're already booked there, you know. Wow. And uh, it's like a Whiskey Joe's, but better. Way, way really? better. Yes. Oh, wow. You, did you ever go up to Homosassa area? I have not been up that way yet, no. Man, there's a section up pretty, there. Though. Yes, there's a section. Once you pass Wikiwachi, go up to Homosassa, you know, probably the next biggest town. If you go a road called Halls River Road to the left, that takes you to about 20, 30 different types of bars and venues of every kind of food and entertainment you can imagine. No it's way. hidden all back there. There's a place called Monkey Island where monkeys live on it year round. No. It's on the river. Yeah, it's on the river, a little island. And if you're by the restaurant, you can see the monkeys. You know, they're jumping no all over way. the place. And then, uh, <laughs> okay. a matter of fact, it's right across Crump's Landing, which I'm telling you, you should go check it out. Uh -huh. You can, uh, if you look to the, look across the river, you'll see the island from there. Oh wow! You know, so you have you ever heard of the freeze? No, uh, oh no, it all by road. Oh wow! Okay. To you mean to Crumps Landing? From the Halls River Road? No, Halls River Road is just a road that goes back, and then there's there's bridges that'll take you to certain little areas in there. Oh wow! But uh, the island is only, you know, I'm talking about maybe hundred yards only. It's a small little okay, island. It's a small island. Yeah, with mm -hmm. these like spider monkeys on there. Wow! And if How you want, you can there? take a. There's a big story yeah. about that. They've been there like 40 years. Uh, wow. I, I, you know, I can't really remember <laughs> it. But, gets, but if you go gets. there, you know, you, you and Jesse can go just visit little bars and freezer, a place called the freezer, the best shrimp around, boiled shrimp. They bring it out. The uh, McCray's. Just someday make a weekend of it and check it out. Yeah, now that the weather's getting nice again, I'll definitely uh, put that on yeah. the calendar on the weekend for us to just take a ride. Yeah, and then, you know, and then, uh, yeah, uh, just look for it, Crump's Landing. It's on, they have their Facebook, you know, da, okay. da, da, you'll yeah, see everything it. on there. And then, like, for our stuff, if you want, like, the links again on the, on the end of my email, all our links are on there. Facebook, YouTube, you know, drop it. Oh, okay, color. yeah, I'll, I'll cut and paste those and put those yeah, Whatever. There. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. It All was right. great Thank talking. Thank you so much, Nelson. Same here. And hey. have a safe trip and a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. We'll probably see you when we get back. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to hear the story. All right. You take care. <laughs> okay. Tell Bickley I said hi, okay? All right. Bye. All right, bye-bye. And to you out there, thank you for listening. I wouldn't have a show if it weren't for you. And don't forget, and remember, it's never too late to leave a trailblazing behind you. So lock on and lock out, and I'll catch you on the flip side. If you like this episode, please share the love. And be sure to go to www.littledrummergirl.com. That's L-A-L-Drummergirl.com. And while you're there, be sure to grab a copy of the free 2019 St. Pete Street Art Calendar. It's only free for a short time, so grab a copy before it's too late. And remember, it's never too late to begin the life of your dreams and leave a trailblazing behind you. So rock on and rock out, and I'll catch you on the flip side.